Steve, welcome to Edinburgh. Welcome back yeah, to thank, Edinburgh, Thank actually. you very much indeed. It's uh, wonderful to be in Scotland. Well, we're delighted that you come to, to talk to the Asian <coughs> Scotland Institute. And later this evening you'll be speaking at the Business School of the University of Edinburgh. A lot of people looking forward to what you have to say, particularly because our mission, as you probably know, is to educate and inspire tomorrow's leaders yeah. about Asia, about which you know a great deal. Um, and I, I guess my first question to you, is that as a mission, is that a, a good thing, an admirable thing to be doing, do you think? I think it's absolutely spot on because um, Britain is going to depend on its, or it has depended on its trade. Yeah. Uh, Scotland has played a great part in developing trade with Asia over the centuries. Mm -hmm. And even in Japan, you can think back to sailors, uh, engineers, pioneers of various sorts. Mr. Who, Glover, for uh, example. Indeed, Mr. Glover, uh, who built modern Japan and uh, took British pro products all over the world. Yeah. And even in the post-war area, uh, Scotland produced a lot of uh, energy behind our export drives and of course became a recipient of Japanese investment in return. So uh, in the circumstances in, into which we're moving, uh, development of those links mm -hmm. will be ever more important. Mm -hmm. And of course Japan is not the only country in Asia that we have to build very strong relations with. But I think if we have the oldest and strongest relationship uh, with Japan uh, of all the Asian countries and it's an enormous asset for the UK so I think it's wonderful that there is an institute in Scotland devoted to this. Thank you. There are two very interesting <coughs> aspects of your own career of course. First the long experience you had as a diplomat uh, including being our, our ambassador in Tokyo. I'd like to talk about that and then of course then first chief executive and then now chairman of Hitachi Europe. Turning to the first part of your experience yes. of, of building relationships with Japan, uh, in this sort of running up to Brexit scenario, and I think you're going to be talking about this later on today, what are the key issues that concern you? Well, I was very lucky that Japan became my career anchor yes. and have seen Japan through various stages of its development. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, high growth in the 70s, um, financial development in the 80s and then the period after that when the UK and Japan became, became uh, quite important security partners. Yeah. And I think today uh, there are four areas where uh, the relationship is really important to both sides. The first is in global management for want of a better word, mm. ensuring that we maintain a solid rules-based international society in which all countries can uh, trade uh, and invest uh, and there is stability around the place. And although we are at different poles of the world, uh, the UK and Japan have very similar values yeah. and objectives mm -hmm. in building that kind of society. Uh, the second obviously is uh, trade investment. Uh, we are uh, a major recipient of Japanese investment and Japan is our fourth largest export market. So, uh, in, in total, uh, the trade is about 24 billion mm -hmm. both ways every year. Uh, that can be expanded, yeah. but is already, in terms of employment within the UK, very important. Yeah. Uh, the third area, which has become more prominent, and I think is very important to the Japanese side, is uh, security. Mm. Uh, I mean, Japan exists in an interesting geopolitical space yeah. because there is, in the background, uh, there are different agendas between uh, the major powers in the Pacific. Uh, we, Japan, the United States, are all very keen to see the Pacific remain uh, an open and safe area. Mm. And uh, there are a number of ways in which, concretely, we have been doing more and more with the Japanese not obviously on the scale of the Americans, yeah. but uh, helping them initially in the 2000s with their first peacekeeping yeah. uh, operations under UN auspices, uh, and since then developing all sorts of exchanges, including occasional military exercises. And I think um, psychologically as well, that is a very important yeah. uh, 
same as the Japanese. Uh, and finally, there are a lot of things in what you can call the third sector, which is areas where the private sector and government are both involved uh, in, for example, research on energy, yes. um, cooperation on climate change issues, and things like that. So uh, there is already a big agenda, yeah. but it's certainly capable of being further developed. That's a good sort of segue into Hitachi, Hitachi's role. Uh, Hitachi, I know, chose the UK as its headquarters and base for much of what it does. Um, as you reflect <coughs> on that in the context of the Brexit vote, uh, and I know that you're not alone as a Japanese company in thinking about that, what are your, your conclusions or your, your feelings about how that's going to play out and what that will do for Hitachi? Well, the UK is a very important platform yeah. for Japanese industry and financial institutions in Europe. And Japanese companies remember, even today, that Mr. Satcher came in the 80s mm -hmm. uh, and said very clearly, please come to the UK, because from the UK, in the UK, you'll have an open environment, but you'll also be able to access the European yeah. market. Yeah. And that was a very strong offer at the time when other countries in Europe were not so welcoming towards uh, Asian investment. Uh, circumstances have changed, but in terms of the volume of Japanese investment, we still have a lion's share mm -hmm. of that in Europe. And of course, the automotive companies, just to name some, are responsible for the fact that the UK is now a net exporter mm -hmm. of cars. Mm -hmm. um, overall, Japanese companies are very happy here. Yeah. But of course, Brexit has thrown a rock in the pool. Yeah. And that will have some inevitable consequences, but we don't yet know how serious the consequences are going to be. And so I would say on the whole, and, and Hitachi included, that people are waiting to see what the actual result of the negotiations is. There is an enormous amount of goodwill, uh, and I think Japanese companies don't give up lightly, so I don't expect there to be any sort of big uh, upheaval, but on the other hand, you know, they have to do their business across the whole of Europe, and it will depend upon how much that is affected by whatever uh, arrangements the government can negotiate with our European partners. Mm. And in the, in the areas of long-term projects that you have, I mean, trains and transportation being one, and, and nuclear energy being another, these are long-term projects requiring decisions about funding and people, taken over a long period of time. Yeah. So uh, would I be right in saying, along with other people who are heading up major industries, that uncertainty is, is not a good thing? Well, that's generally true of business. And, mm. and, you know, we all look for stability. There's no perfect environment. Mm. Uh, Hitachi's businesses are, I mean, they stand on their own in the UK. Yeah. In the case of the rail business, however, the strategy when we came was to build a plant in the UK mm. for construction of rolling stock, yeah. which could also be our hub yeah. for exports to Europe. Mm -hmm. um, that strategy is still in place, but again, we'll have to see what uh, the impact yeah. uh, might be. In the meantime, however, we do have uh, very good relationships with uh, the British government and the transport, I mean, the uh, operating companies mm -hmm. on, on rail. Mm -hmm. Uh, we will be bidding uh, energetically for projects like the High Speed Rail project uh, and others. And we will be determined, uh, as we possibly can be, to maintain the employment that we have in the UK. But it does depend on getting the orders. The uh, nuclear project is a very interesting one. That also could potentially be uh, affected uh, by Brexit. But I think in both cases, um, the critical issue is really the, av the availability of skilled labour. Mm. Now that is an issue which is there for the UK, yeah. irrespective of our relationship with the European Union. Yeah. And I'm very glad that the British government has an industrial strategy which is now beginning to look at mm. how government and uh, business can work together to address the need for more people with engineering skills, basic manufacturing skills, digital skills, mm -hmm. and, and the like. So, um, you know, there's everything played for, 
the government has to decide what kind of economy it wants yeah. in the future, yeah. but I hope very much that Japanese companies will remain uh, an important part of both our manufacturing and financial sectors. Stephen, thank you. My very last question, because there will be quite a lot of young people <coughs> in the audience tonight, students, uh, young professionals. Um, would you encourage them to engage with Japan, to go to Japan, to uh, immerse themselves in Japanese culture as something to enjoy? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and in Asia as a whole. But uh, uh, Japan is a particularly beautiful uh, country, hospitable country. Uh, there's uh, a lot of fun industries in Japanese fashion, cinema, yeah. uh, and so forth, as you know. Uh, and there are uh, schemes like, for example, the the JET scheme, which yes. the Japanese government runs and graduates who once spent a couple of years teaching in Japanese schools. We, as an embassy, employed at one point eight people off that program. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they you know, earned a salary while acquiring all the skills of uh, living in Japan. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, then had an enormous sort of career yeah. uh, benefit from it. Yes. Well, thank you again for being here. It's wonderful that you've come up. We've reconnected since our Cambridge yeah. date, which is good. And we look forward to hearing what you have to say this evening. Thank you so much. Thanks very much indeed. Thank